<laughs> Hi everybody, we're here at the Egyptian Embassy in Washington DC on International Boulevard or International Drive. Uh, we're here at a demonstration sponsored by Code Pink to protest the arrest and conviction and the capital punishment that was issued to 529 Muslim Brotherhood activists for the alleged assassination of a police officer in Egypt. So we're out here today. Nadia Benjamin and her protégés came inside to hand in 10,000 petitions, 10,000 signatures to the Egyptian embassy officials protesting the capital punishment that was ordered for these activists, many of whom were convicted in absentia. They were had to flee the country because of political repression. So that's why we're down here today. This is Freeman Sullivan. You're an intrepid journalist here in Washington, D.C. Your live streamer. Uh, welcome you to our live stream today. We have a few people down here um, at the Egyptian Embassy. We're out here in front of the Egyptian Embassy on International Drive here in Washington, D.C. to protest the death penalty for 529 Egyptian activists who were convicted, uh, many in absentia, because they had to flee the country for the alleged murder of a police officer. Uh, we believe that, uh, personally, I believe that this is a, a repression uh, against the Muslim Brotherhood where they've openly shot and killed many thousands of Muslim Brotherhood activists. Uh, I'm not saying that I would support Morsi politically, but I think that repression in any form <laughs> is wrong. Uh, the United States does fund the Egyptian government to the tune of two, almost $2 billion a year. They're the second largest recipient of foreign aid after Israel. Um, uh, we're asking that the United States government withdraw their aid to Egypt, the financial aid for the military, because that's where most of the money is going. Believe you me, when the United States gives money to the Egyptian government, they're not giving it to the Egyptian people, they're giving it to the Egyptian military. And the Egyptian military has used this money and these supplies to shoot and kill thousands of demonstrators in the streets in and around Tahrir Square. So there's a little background for you on that. Uh, recently, uh, in the last year, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the news, uh, there's been a harsh crackdown of activists in Egypt. So, that's what's going on here, and we're here down at the embassy, the Egyptian embassy down here on International Drive here in Washington, D.C., to protest the actions of this corrupt and illegal government. So we have all these great Code Pink activists, uh, Medea Benjamin's here, we'll see if we can get an interview with her in a little bit. And we're so glad you could join us. Please retweet us out. 
Uh, hashtag code pink, hashtag Egypt. That's what I'm using for this demonstration. Uh, no U.S. dollars for Egypt's, Egypt's coup. Because it was an illegal coup, the people did not vote this government that's currently in power. Now, we're not saying that, I'm not saying personally that I support the Morsi government, because I don't, but repression in any of its form is wrong. And convicting people in absentia for crimes they may or may not have committed is also wrong. So we're asking that the United States government uh, does not fund state-sponsored terrorism, which is basically the MO of the U.S. government around the world is to sponsor state terrorism, uh, because the United States is the largest exporter of terrorism in the world. And we also know that because of the continued drone strikes. Well, I think they have a moratorium, finally. But we know that they have the continued drone strikes against Pakistan and the various other countries around the world, where they're basically murdering people without a trial. Doing the same thing that they're doing in Egypt. So, United States, exporter of state-sponsored terrorism. So we're here to protest that. Uh, we're down here at the Egyptian Embassy, here on International Drive, here in Washington, D.C. So hopefully you'll come down and join us. Uh, we're uh, right off the Van S stop on Metro. Uh, we're down here by UDC, University of District of Columbia. So if you do it in the area, come by and drop by and say hi and join us in our protest. Today is a uh, first spring day, unofficially, uh, that we have here in Washington, D.C. It has been cold, ho, 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 ho. Like if we go like this, and then Kate, you go out in the middle and you guys go to the other side as well, we won't have that. Waft it right there. It won't go. Is anybody driving here? For those of you who are just joining us, we're down here at the Egyptian Embassy with Code Pink, protesting the uh, capital punishment of 529 Egyptians that were sentenced, many in absentia, because they had to flee the country, over the alleged murder of a police officer who may or may be exact 529 people, okay. Uh, it sounds a little ridiculous to me. Uh, generally, when there's a murder, there's like maybe one or two people that murder somebody, not 529. So the circumstances of this case are somewhat suspect. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
So and we're out here protesting that. Uh, for more info, you can go to the Code Pink website, as you can see on the banner, codepink.org. Um, and it's in the events link, I believe. Anyway, we'll be down here for the next hour or so. We are co sponsors, I think she's charged and I'm in charge. Okay. Sure. We're two organizations here. So. If we can get you to just slide down onto the sidewalk so we can block Oh, we don't want to block this door? Yeah. Right. Do you want us to stay here in this? But you can just slide right with, right with the solar. Inside, you mean? Hey, yeah. Hey, officer, he wants is it possible that we just take pictures now and then move when they come in? Because they do have an alternative. No. I understand, but just we're going to take some pictures now and then move. Just, just, you're going to have to be real quick with this. Yeah, I'll give you a quick five minutes. Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks. We have more people awesome. coming, actually. Yeah, well, then you have to take the rest of the kids outside. All right, we're going to go across the street here and take a picture while we have an opportunity. Oh, my God, I'm lost. The end hey, of this banner should hey, be right here. Hold on a second. Go ahead and take the one picture that you said. We but did. when you move, I want you to start right here. And start yeah, that's what we're doing. Right. Okay, you want us to be here? Yeah. We used to be here. So, this one here, here and go this way. It's a sidewalk. I mean, it's a sidewalk. I mean, we used to come here right where your car is, and uh, that's away from there. So this is yeah, we like hundreds of times. You really, it's this much better picture better. to have the Egyptian okay. embassy okay. behind us. So let's go inside here. So, no, no, no. Would you mind? Sidewalk, 
For those of you just joining us, we're down here at the Egyptian Embassy in Washington, D.C. One international drive. We're here to protest the capital punishment that was ordered for 529 Egyptian activists, uh, many in absentia, for uh, the alleged murder of a police officer. I'd like to know how 529 people murdered a police officer. Uh, so if you got the logic of that one, uh, let me know. Uh, chat, log on to the chat. And tell me, why exactly did the Egyptian embassy, or why did the Egyptian government order and murder 529 activists? Because 529 activists are the same as one police officer's life. Anyway, the other the other issue is just so everybody knows, just so everyone knows, one second, just so everyone knows, this is okay, by the way. This is legal. Okay? What I just did is legal. As long as you keep walking, you can be in this space. This is not like dead space that we cannot occupy. As long as we keep moving, yeah, we occupy. Right to be in this space. We do not block traffic. We, we do not block sidewalks. We're safe. Um, where are we no, we're down here. Uh, if anybody wants to join in on the chat here, let me check. So I'm not really keen on this interface with this camera, folks. But uh, so I'm having trouble logging onto the chat for one reason or another to see if anybody's on the chat. But I will check on my other phone and see if anybody's talking. Do you want the, uh, the mic thing? Yeah. Are you ready? I have a microphone. So we're going to speak, uh, have some speakers here in a couple of minutes. All right, it's loud enough, plenty loud. Well, I would because but you do it any way you want. I just think, where are you going to put them? On top of each other? Are they going to hold their arms up in the air? I mean, if I were you guys, if I would be, for me, I'd be doing this. Hey, man, how are you? Anyway, for those of you just joining us, we're down here at the embassy of the Egyptian embassy here on International Drive here in Washington, D.C. with Code Pink and Egyptian Solidarity Groups uh, protesting the capital punishment that was ordered for 529 activists in Egypt in one day for the alleged murder of a police officer. Amnesty International has come down against this and condemned this kangaroo court because many of the defendants were not there to defend themselves. They've had to leave the country because of officially sponsored state terrorism. Sure thing, sure thing. No problem, not. Officers watching out for our safety here, making sure we don't get run over by the cars coming through. So, are we going to use the mic or no? No, go ahead and use it. They need to hear it. They need to hear it on the inside. Hi, I'm
I really need to root this phone out, viewers. I'm using my old LG Esteem. And the Wi-Fi connection. But everything's kind of peaceful and calm here. We've got about 20 demonstrators. Or maybe 15 demonstrators from Code Pink. And various uh, Egyptian solidarity groups. Speakers here in just a few minutes. So, this event is pretty well covered by MSM. Checking my chat viewers. Uh, if you're commenting, uh, I'm not able to see it at the moment. I'm going to keep trying here. Uh, it's naturally an upgrade to the stupid software that we're using. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're being mirrored. Thank you, Sandra. No problem. That's what I'm here in DC to do is to uh, do as much live streaming of political events as possible. Anyway, Medea's getting so ready to speak. We're here. waiting for more people to come, yeah, but exactly. in the meantime, we thought we should be doing a, a little bit of a discussion about why we're here. Um, this doesn't sound like is this on? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. Oh, yeah. Really? It is on. But you know what? Yeah. It's which yeah, but we got to try again. Go ahead, Ms. So just, uh, just to know, there are more people from the Egyptian American group who are on their way. Um, but we want to just start to say that we are here to show our outrage about what the Egyptian court just did with sentencing 529 people to death in two days. Uh, one session that the, uh, the accused were in cages uh, and the second session where they didn't even allow the lawyers into the room. And the people who are accused have not been given any kind of documentation of what they've been accused of. And then to be given a death sentence. A death right, sentence. You want me to, I'm pointing it at the embassy. Yeah. So just imagine a death sentence for 529 people after 
two-day session. So this is something that is obviously has nothing to do with justice, is a total sham. And we're glad that even President Obama and Secretary Kerry have called it that. We think they should be stronger in their denunciation. They say that this verdict must be re reversed. They call on the Egyptian government to do that. But the U.S. government should be even stronger than that. They should say there will be no U.S. funds going to Egypt as long as this government continues No cash for coup! No cash for coup. That's what we want to hear them say. And we want to hear them say that there will be sanctions against this government. Why aren't they giving a list of people, CC, starting with CC himself, and then going down the line? And why aren't they freezing their bank accounts here and anywhere around the world? Why aren't they saying that they can't come and travel to the United States or anywhere outside of Egypt? We want there to be a stick to this, that if the CC government is putting 20,000 plus people in prison, is sentencing hundreds and hundreds of people to death, and right now there's another 700 who are being tried. That this government is one that the entire world should repudiate. This government is one that the United States says that we will not have relations with the government that is so obscene in the way it treats its own people is so disgusting, despicable, when it comes to human rights. And their allegations of torture in the prisons in Egypt are so frequent that we have so much proof of how people are being treated inside the prisons. We want our government to denounce the torture, to denounce the kangaroo courts, to denounce the sham trials, and to say that we will take no part in supporting this government. You know, when you look at what the U.S. government has done, it says that we will continue to provide military training to the Egyptian government. And the justification is that we have to teach them democracy. Ha, ha, ha. I think it's absurd that the U.S. government continues to say we want to train the Egyptians because if this is what the training, all these years of training from the United States has led up to, in fact, Sisi himself has been trained in the United States. Yep. He went to the U.S. War College. So I think just as we see in the School of the Americans and elsewhere, U.S. training of military overseas has unfortunately led to torture inside the prisons, human rights abuses, so we say no to the training of the Egyptian military and no to any U.S. money going to this regime. So we want to hear from some other people. And Hala, do you want to speak? My dad passed away like three weeks ago and I couldn't attend his funeral. I couldn't see my mom because just I'm scared that could arrest me because just I see my opinion here that this is a military coup and you saw by yourself how they did by American citizens. How about me? I'm not an American citizen. How they are going to do with me? So I didn't attend my dad's funeral. I didn't see my mom till now. This is just because I said my, just because I, I said that I am, I was in Rabah massacre at August 14, and I saw the killing over there. I saw that they killed the people over there. They shot them in their heads, in their chest, everywhere. I saw the dead bodies everywhere. Six floors, the hospital, six floors filled with bodies. Each floor filled with bodies. And I am witness that I didn't see any kind of weapon with these people. I didn't see any kind of weapon. And they didn't give, they, they said that they gave them uh, a clear way to just go outside of the square. No, this, this is a lie. They, they didn't give that. They were killed the people everywhere. 
everywhere, even in the hospital. I saw many cases killed at the hospital where, we, where they actually shot us in, in, the, in the lobby of the hospital and we were hiding in the, in the room in the hospital under the desk because they, they, the intention that they, they want to kill us in the hospital itself. And they put the gun in front of me and my husband. We, we, we told them that we are physicians. We can't leave the people here. It is our job to, to, to do anything for them. He threatened us with a weapon in front of me and my husband. And he told us we have to get out and leave, and leave the, the patient in the hospital. It is bloody military coup. And they, at the start, they said that they, uh, they, this is just a transitional period. And you saw what happened yesterday. Yeah, you saw what happened yesterday. He's going to be the president of Egypt. This, this is the truth. Obama, this is a bloody military coup. This is a military coup. Yes. You can't call it other than that. This is a military coup. Obama, this is a military coup. Obama, this is a military coup. We want democracy. We want democracy. This is a military coup. It's a coup. It's a military coup. Obama, this is a 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 coup. Hey, Obama, say the truth. Hey, Obama, say the truth. Isn't it a bloody coup? Isn't it a bloody coup? Hey, Obama, say the truth. Obama say the truth. Isn't it a bloody coup? Isn't it a bloody coup? It's a coup, it's a coup. 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 Well, let's fix it real quick. I just gotta change the channel. For those of you just joining us, we're down here at the Egyptian Embassy here on International Drive in Washington, D.C. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan, here to bring you the report. Uh, Code Pink is sponsored. Code Pink and Egyptian American Solidarity Groups have sponsored a demonstration against the capital punishment that was ordered for 529 people for the alleged murder of a police officer um, in what is the military coup, uh, that's still a military coup of the Egyptian government. Anyway, uh, Egypt is the second largest recipient of foreign aid from the United States government, and we all know where that aid goes. It goes for killing people. It doesn't go to support the people. It doesn't feed anybody. It doesn't clothe or house anybody. It goes strictly for weapons and to support the military-sponsored state terrorism that the government of Egypt is currently engaged in. Test, test. So we have another speaker coming up. We're testing the sound system here. No, I don't know. Who wanted the microphone? Okay. Why are we here? The question is, why am I here? I'm here as an American. I'm here as a Muslim. I'm here as a person of faith. 
I'm here as indeed a person of conscience to say that there is no justice in Egypt and there needs to be justice in Egypt. We are told, and I'm sure some of those in the building, I'm sure some of you in those buildings, I'm sure that those can hear my voice. I know that you've read, you know, the Quran, and it says that if you take a life, it's as if you've killed all of humanity. And if you save a life, it's as if you've saved all of humanity. And we're here today to say that we want to save lives. We want justice. We want to save life. We want to make sure that it takes place. The same thing that we want to see justice. As it was said in one of the holy books, we want to see justice in Egypt roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. We want to say, as it said in the Quran, that the Creator has set the scales of justice high in the firmament in order that human beings should not transgress, therefore establish just weights and fall not short in the balance. And that's what's wrong. That is what's wrong that in Egypt is out of balance because there's no justice. Because if you don't have justice, you can't have balance. You can't have a good society if you don't have justice. And indeed, if you're going to kill 529 people, there's no justice. And we're here to say that that's wrong. We're here to say that. We're here to say it. We're here to speak out. Because Dr. Martin Luther King taught us, he said, mm -hmm. that there's a time when silence is betrayal, that you have to speak out. You know that indeed, that the coward will ask, is it safe? Vanity will ask, is it popular? But conscience, conscience will ask, is it right? And it's not right what's taking place in Egypt. It is not right because there's no justice. There is no democracy. It's not right. And our government, our very own government, is complete, complicit with this form of injustice. Giving money, giving money, giving money, funding this dictatorship, funding this murderous thug regime. You know what they do with the money? The military, they line their pockets with American dollars, with our taxpayer dollars. They line their pockets. They line their pockets with it, they line it and do it, and continue to create murder, whether it's rapper, whether it's in, in innocent uh, demonstrators, they're killing them. And so we're saying, no cash for coups. 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 No cash for coup. 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 So we're gonna continue to come. We'll continue to come today. Next days we'll continue. And we're gonna join hands. All of us, we're gonna join hands. We're gonna join hands as Americans, non-Americans, Egyptians, we're going to join hands as Muslims, Christians, Jews, and people of no facial affiliations, but people of conscience, we'll all join hands and we're going to lift our voices for justice for Egypt. We'll lift our voices for justice. We'll lift every voice and saying, till earth and heaven rings, rings with the harmony of liberty, and facing the rising sun, our new has, day has begun. We will march on and continue to march on till victory is won. Victory in Egypt for justice. Victory in Egypt in Egypt for justice. Victory for justice. Victory for justice. Victory for justice. No cash for coup. No cash for coup. No cash for coup. Here, here. No cash for Thank you, General Bears. Thank you, Occupy Carlisle. We have another speaker coming up. Dear uh, friends and, uh, and Egyptian uh, citizens and American citizens, um, it is an honor to be here, to be among the few. 
because the majority is silent. Yeah. And as they say, the saying of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that a silent person in front of evil is a silent devil. And my talk really is to, to, to those people who came and sacrificed their time in the cold and stood here. And then I, I pray to God to bless you and to, to give you the best reward in this life and in the hereafter. And also I would like to talk to the people in the embassy. Many of them are brainwashed. They think that we are against Egypt. We love Egypt. This we, we love are here Egypt. We love Egypt. Yes. We love the country where we were born. The country where we got education. The country where our families are there. We don't want to live under tyranny. We are not against Asia. We are not against you. But you are being brainwashed by the enemies of Asia. We are today to, to protest 500 people sentenced to death. Well, well brothers, do you know about the 7,000 people that were massacred in Rabah? This is the sign of Rabah, yeah. where thousands of people were massacred. And people are just watching or ignoring that it did not happen. The 500 people sentenced to death is just the tip of the iceberg that the American media doesn't want to mention. That many of Egyptians don't want to remember. But this was only just a few months ago. And every day, people are being massacred on the streets. The 500 people was just a semblance of justice, so that they fooled the world that there is some kind of justice. There is no justice in Egypt. The sentence were, were prepared by the military ruler of Egypt. I don't know whether what I'm saying is going to make any difference to the administration. The administration went up and down, jumped out of their chairs when 80 people were massacred in Ukraine. And truly, they did the right thing. But thousands of people have been massacred in Egypt, and I haven't seen one single statement from a member of Congress, except very few, or from the administration, or the State Department. And they are still considering, using the fact that they have, whether it is a coup or it is not a coup. Can I ask you a question? Five, 529 people are sentenced to death, and the administration is is distressed about this, correct? Yes. Should these 529 people be put on trial in the first place? These yes. people should not be put on trial in the first place. There are no crime that those people did. They are all put, put together into a bunch of people. They think that they killed one person. How could 529 people <laughs> kill one police officer? There is no case. There is no justice. There is no case and there is no justice. I would no like evidence, no defense. I would like just to mention one thing. I have never entered this, this embassy except once, last year under President Morsi, because I felt that this embassy represented me when Morsi was president. It never represented me under Mubarak. It never represents me today. And it is a very sad story. These people are getting their salaries, for serving their masters, not for serving the Egyptian people or even the American people, because Americans now will not even dare go to Egypt after what happened to Miss Benjamin and others. Nobody wants to go to Egypt. They are destroying the reputation of the country. Egypt is becoming a big jail for the Egyptian people. And it is a sad thing that I never imagined the day will come where I'll be talking like this about my country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No more money for Egypt's crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime.
throw them all the money for the Asian tribe. Not another nickel, not another dime. No more money for Egypt crimes. Not another nickel. Not another dime. No One, more two, money for Egypt crimes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the crime, stop the hate. Stop the crime, stop the hate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. Stop the killing, stop the hate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Military rule out the door. 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 Hey Obama, don't you see? Hey Obama, don't you see? Isn't it a bloody coup? 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 Yes. <laughs> what is it? It is a bloody coup. Why don't you say something? I'm not a good speaker. <laughs> you are. You well, I want to thank everyone who came here and uh, I was expecting more people to come, but because of the short notice, maybe our people did not show a number. Normally, we come 40, 50, 60 people. But I think uh, everybody was here counts for 100 at least. Uh, you know, and uh, we're all here standing for one cause, which is uh, justice, which does not exist in Egypt, neither for Egyptians or for Americans. If there's no justice for you, there's only. A military rule, a bloody rule, and uh, everybody who is in power today has to say yes to the true leader who is going to be the president of his own people, not the Egyptians. Of course. And that's all I'm saying. That uh, I hope that the U.S. administration will reconsider cutting the aid completely, not just partially. And of course, they're trying to give the aid back once the Iran and election, which is not going to be fair and free. Everybody knows somebody's going to win. Everybody knows the results already. So that election is not constitute that they restore the aid and pay the Egyptian government money. Of course, America is with the wrong partner, with a killer, a war criminal, and asking him or demanding him to establish democracy, which is, I think, a joke. And that's all I can say. Thank you. I have a question for you. Question for me. They said that there was a referendum that took place in, in Egypt that uh, allowed the constitution, allowed for these elections. Did the Egyptian people want the elections? Was that a... Was that a fair election like they're calling... Well, the there was a referendum back in January, and only those who support the coup and long the coup authority went out and voted about 4 million out of 99 million. And the authority declared that 70% uh, of Egyptians came out and voted, and all the, the polls were empty. And uh, of course, you have seen it on TV, and uh, nobody participated. We were actually standing here across the embassy for four days, while only five people came and voted in. So nobody really participated except the two who support us, people who benefit from the coup. So and was there, was, were you allowed to vote no in Egypt? Uh, you could have, I mean, you had, no one was allowed to say no, of course. No one was supposed to make any uh, campaign against the constitution. Everybody had to speak in favor or just you would take it to jail. You know? So, uh, and they had signs inside all the polls saying, vote yes. So, and you had to vote yes because the army guy with the gun is right outside. You know? That's how they did it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I think it's interesting that some of us who are out here are with the group Code Pink, uh, which is a feminist group, a group that is uh, supporting women's rights around the world, and a group that doesn't take part in political affiliations, neither here at home nor with political parties overseas. We're not here to support one political party, Muslim Brotherhood, any other party. We're here because we believe in human rights. We're here because we see the hypocrisy of our government when it comes to what's happening in Egypt. To not be absolutely clear to say there were elections, the Egyptian people voted. If they don't like the way they voted and who came out, wait till the next election and vote them out. And that's not what happened in Egypt. Instead, there was a military coup. And so our government should be absolutely clear that military coups are supposed to be a thing in the past, not in today's world. And that our government should be saying, we will not give any money for this coup. 
we will not give any kind of political support to this coup and we will not recognize any election that comes out of this because already the papers in this country are saying that Sisi is going to be the next president as if it's a done deal as if there is some kind of legitimacy because now, now they're going to go to a vote and that the Egyptian people are tired of instability they want a, a, a tight fist they want somebody to come in who's just going to give, give some stability well I don't think anybody can say what the Egyptian people want anymore because the Egyptian people don't have the right to speak anymore when there's a government in power that is killing people who are sitting in a square in support of somebody who was elected then that's not a, any kind of democratic government so I think the American people should understand that it's not a question of did you like the government that was elected do you like Hamas and Gaza no I don't really like them do I like the Muslim Brotherhood I wouldn't have voted for them but I'm here to say that I stand with the people who are being oppressed whose rights are being violated and when you see a kangaroo court like just happened that says in two days that 529 people should be sentenced to death now we're hearing oh that verdict will be overturned don't worry about that well hell I'm sure the families of those 529 people are very worried about that I'm sure those 529 people are very worried about it. I'm sure the 700 plus people who are now going to be on trial are very worried about it. What is the message that it's sending to all Egyptian people? The message is you don't have the right to speak out. You don't have the right to oppose a military coup. You don't have the right to peacefully call for democracy in your country. That's the message. And what's the message to the Muslim Brotherhood? I hate to say it, but I think the message to the Muslim Brotherhood, I think they're trying to egg on the Muslim Brotherhood. I think they're trying to, to give them no option but a violent one. Because when you cut off all avenues of peaceful protest, what is left for people? The government in Egypt right now, the coup government, is blaming the Muslim Brotherhood for the violence that's happening especially in the Sinai. But there's an Al-Qaeda group there that's taking credit for that. And the Muslim Brotherhood is saying, we didn't do it, and we denounce it. And Bedouins that have been, that have been pro armed and, and protesting against this government from the beginning. Right. But the government is blaming it on the Muslim Brotherhood because they want the Muslim Brotherhood to look like a violent group, and it justifies the banning of the Brotherhood. And when you ban the Brotherhood, and when you jail them, and when you give them death sentences, what's going to happen? Our fear is that it's, go it's going to lead to more violence. And I think that's what this military government wants, because then it justifies the crackdown. So we hope the, the Muslim Brotherhood supporters don't take the bait, don't turn to violence, because that's not the answer. But the answer is that the world community has to stand up and say, we totally oppose the coup. We demand the reversal of these verdicts. We demand that the thousands and thousands of people who are being held without any accusations and without any trials be released. We demand to the end of the torture. And we demand that there be a period of transition where, where there can be really, well, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe what we demand is that the elected government be back in power because they were the elected government the first one so democratically elected so we are here to say to our friends the egyptians and egyptian americans that we hope that our government will speak up much more forcefully than it has and we hope that the american people will stand behind the egyptians to say we believe in human rights for all we believe in respect for all and we believe in real democracy and not military coups. So I was in Tahrir Square by just accident during the uh, revolution. And I can tell you, I know people from all different stripes of life in Egypt, from uh, left-wing protesters to human rights activists, and they're all on the streets against this. 
This is not just a Muslim Brotherhood uh, protest right now in Egypt. These are all freedom-loving people in Egypt that demand to have democracy. They tasted democracy. I will tell you another thing. The days in Tahrir Square, people came up to me, experts in Egypt that lived there, that, that worked in shadow governments, mostly left-wing uh, um, academics. They told me, this is what's going to happen. There will be, the United States will demand for the immediate elections, which they did. The Muslim Brotherhood, because there's a, they're the most organized political party, other than Mubarak, which was dissolved, would win. Right after that, there would be a coup. They said that, and it would be, be right back to where we started. This was in 2011. I was speaking in the, the journalist syndicate, and many of the academics said, if we don't delay elections for at least two years and allow other groups to organize and become politically strong, we will have a coup in two years. And absolutely came through. So don't tell me that this the, the pundits on CNN know everything, or the pundits in State Department know everything. They know nothing, or if they do, they're not telling us the truth. The truth is they knew exactly what they were doing. They want this coup to happen. They want a dictator back in power. It's more comfortable for them and Israel. We all know that. And it's time for the American people to stand up, as we did, if you recall, in Wisconsin. When, the, when we were occupying the capital in Wisconsin, and the Egyptian people sent us pizzas because they saw our protest. And we were telling them how we stand up with the, in, with the Egyptian people. It's time for Americans to stand up around this country with the Egyptians once again and call for an end to this coup government and a, a dictatorship that's about to happen. We can stop this now, but we, it's very difficult afterwards. Remember, this is a general once again. Everyone that's been a leader in Egypt since Abdel Nasser, uh, Gamal Nasser, has been a general. It's time for a civilian like Morsi or someone like this to become president and democratically elected, whether they like them, if they have a good four years or not. Just like in, the, uh, in most countries. Give me your number. Thank you. Sorry. Anyway, we're down here at the Egyptian Embassy on International Drive here in Washington, D.C. This is your live stream of Matt Sullivan. I'm here on March 27th, 2014. On a little blustery day. Unofficially the first day of spring here in Washington. We're out here protesting the capital punishment that was ordered for 529 activists in Egypt. Uh, the trial that lasted only three days. And they were not allowed to defend themselves where the lawyers weren't present during part of the trial in this kangaroo court of injustice. So that's why we're down here, folks. We're joining Code Pink and the Egyptian American Solidarity Groups in this protest at the Egyptian Embassy. Sorry, I got a little bit of a cold here. So that was it for the speakers pretty much, I think. If not more. So we'll give you one last look at the, at the signs and we're going to walk around here before we leave you all. If anybody got anything that they want to say on the chat? Well, let me check. Okay. Oh, thank you, Global Occupy News Network. Thank you, Activist World News Now, for re retransmitting. We very much appreciate that. When I heard about the so-called judgment by a stupid judge to put 529 people to death for allegedly killing an officer, I mean, that was such a shock. I came here before to the embassy for other demonstrations since the days of Hassan Mubarak. And what I would like to say 
the military is, is really ignoring or allowing or encouraging those judges to abuse law and abuse Egypt. And I thought for when I first heard about it that this is just a rude or a stupid judge who made this judgment. But the silence by all the people in power, including the Minister of Judges of Justice, that means that they concur with this asshole, excuse my English, with this stupid judgment. And I really think this should be condemned. But what we need to do, and I'm saying this mostly, mainly primarily to the Egyptian Americans, and here maybe the Egyptians in Egypt, what we need to do is to have unity. We have to stop taking position for or against the other side. All sides need to be united for a national charter for unity and inclusion in Egypt. If you continue to disagree and fight, the military will win and will continue to win. What we need is a charter like they did in Algeria, that they did in South Africa, in emphasizing the characteristics that we are all Egyptians. We stop this bickering and fighting between two sides because the real loser is Egypt. And unless we reach some kind of agreement or a compromise or a common ground for all the Egyptians, and maybe we can start here. All the Egyptians, unless we do this, the, the, the one side will win for a couple of years and the other side will throw them down. Morsi won and then he will throw down the military in charge and somehow the other side could take over. So I'm really calling on all of you and all the Egyptians to get united for the sake of Egypt. Thank you. Thank you. Some chance? Okay. From the Nile to the sea. 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 Egypt people will be free. Egypt people will be free. From the Nile to the sea. From the Nile to the sea. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Revolution, revolution. Revolution, revolution. There is only one solution. There is only one solution. Revolution, revolution. There is only one solution. There is only one solution. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We don't want your bloody war. 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 Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. Stop the killing, stop the hate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Stop the killing, stop the hate. Stop the killing, stop the hate. From the Nile to the sea. From the Nile to the sea. Egypt people will be free. Egypt people will be free. From the Nile to the sea. From the Nile to the sea. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Egypt wants democracy. Revolution, revolution. Revolution, revolution. There is only one solution. There is only one solution. Hey Obama, say the truth. Hey Obama, say the truth. Isn't it a bloody coup? Isn't it a bloody coup? Hey Obama, say the truth. Hey Obama, say the truth. Isn't it a bloody coup? Isn't it a bloody coup? It's a coup. It's a coup. It's a coup. It's a coup. Down, down with the 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 coup. The Rabah sign, which is this four finger thing, this is the, the symbol for the square where thousands of people uh, protested for over 45 days, and then many of them, about 7,000, were killed in a period of 10 hours by the coup forces with bullets. So four bullets in the head, whatever. So this is the Rabah Square in downtown, you know, one of the largest areas, sections of Cairo. So this is Rabah, means Rabah Square, that's the square where all the protesters, the anti coup protesters, were shot dead by the uh, police and the army. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Were, were the only the people in the, uh, that were protesting 
the uh, military takeover of Egypt? Was it only Muslim Brotherhood, or there? No, the people who were there were Egyptians from so all over. So does this mean Muslim Brotherhood, or does no? The four mean? means the square. His name is Raba. Raba means four in Arabic. So this has nothing to do with any group. This is the name of the square. Yes, and now if you raise this file in Egypt like this, in public. They take you to jail. Just uh, you can even on Facebook use this as your uh, profile photo or anything. You are in jail right away. So that is what's happening in Egypt today. It is a symbol of state fascism. So these people stood up in a city for 45 days and then they killed them just by in, in, in a few hours. And they could have dispersed them using peaceful means, water, whatever. There are so many ways to get them out, but they decided to kill them so they can vanish and then they can own the country, run the country, and be the, you know, the president and what happened. Being terrorists. So some of us came here early, and we took into the uh, consulate the petitions that people have signed uh, protesting this verdict. And it was really amazing because we sent this out two days ago, and we now have over 10,000 people that signed the petition. So there's a lot of support for this protest that we are representing out here today. And they also actually were quite nice when we went inside. They gave us the email that we could use and said it would be more impactful if each person sent an individual email. So we will write to the over 10,000 people who signed the petition and give them that individual email so this embassy will be swamped with people writing in, as they have been swamped with people calling in. So for those of you who are Egyptian and Egyptian-American, uh, please know that there are a lot of us uh, who are not present here, but who are protesting this verdict, protesting this coup, and will continue to do so. So is there anybody who'd like the mic to talk about why you're here? My name is Michael Beer. I work at Nonviolence International. And we stand here today because we are utterly opposed to the death penalty uh, being perpetrated by any government, including the United States government. And we are utterly opposed to a travesty of justice in Egypt. Um, I think 529 people sentenced to death for the murder of one person. It's just one of the most fantastical uh, kind of charges uh, and that we have seen in recent years from any of the 200 crazy governments we have in this world today. We at Nonviolence International are very committed to supporting nonviolent resistance wherever it may be. The nonviolent resistance in Egypt uh, brought down the Mubarak regime, and the nonviolent re resistance and people of Egypt will not live forever under the military oligarchy that rules Egypt today. Egypt, like many other countries in the world, suffers from a very bad case of militarism and love of militarism, and we also have this problem in the United States and many other places. We have to work for a world in which the militaries are abolished because they serve no purpose in the modern era except to, in most cases, just oppress their own peoples. Uh, or in our case, in this country, to help uh, prop up a very large global uh, empire. And we're here to stand in solidarity with the Egyptian people that this verdict will not stand. We will be out here for days, weeks, months, years if necessary to stand behind the Egyptian people and to call on the United States government to end uh, support for the dictatorship in Egypt to call for an end to military dictatorship in Egypt, and to call for restoration of democracy uh, in Egypt. And so I just want all the Egyptian people to know that there are many, many millions of Americans who are supportive of your struggle for human rights and democracy. 
and we are not fooled by the propaganda about calling the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization or all this kind of nonsense. We are here, whether from the political left or the political right or the political center, to say that the world has minimum standards for human rights and the current regime in Egypt is violating many of them. That's right. So thank you all for coming out today. There are many people who are suffering right now and we are here to bear witness to their struggle and that they're, uh, they will not be alone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a couple more minutes if anybody else wants to come forward and say why you're here. Yeah? Okay, just a minute. And I also want people to know that there is a group that has called for a protest here on Saturday at noon. So please spread the word, uh, hopefully, because it won't be a weekday, more folks can come out on Saturday. And for anybody who doesn't know, Ichetas is an amazing, wonderful role model of an American who cares about the rest of the world, and not only cares, but puts her body on the line and goes out to protest, gets arrested often for nonviolent civil disobedience, yeah. and really is the model of of the way we would like American people to be showing and being compassionate with people around the world. Yes, Yay. Thank you. Actually, I just got back from Syracuse uh, to get a jury trial date I'm an for player. a um, action I'm an that a group of us did last year at the Hancock Air Force Base. I was arrested because I stood in a driveway and read the First Amendment of the Constitution. And apparently the police did not like that. So we were arrested. But I wanted to say simply this that whether you are an individual or a group or a nation, any entity that uses terrorist activities, no matter what the reason for it is, whether it is to make the world safe for democracy, that you have become terrorists. And this is what I want to say. My country, my beloved country, has become a terrorist nation for the way in which they have used the drone to destroy men, women, children, countries and my heart still grieves for those at Guantanamo who have been many of them have been found innocent and yet they are still locked up in Guantanamo God have mercy on us all Any Thank final you. words from anybody here? See you Saturday? Or, uh, so, oh, is that your hand? No. Uh, she's doing <laughs> so, no. So, anybody who can come back, please come back on Saturday. Tell your friends about uh, coming back on Saturday. It's important that we keep up the momentum here. Uh, and that the world understands that the Egyptian government cannot get away with this, the Egyptian courts can get, cannot get away with this, and that our own government must stand up and do more. And while we are out seeing Obama condemn the Russians and Ukraine and Crimea and all of that, we want to hear them condemning the Egyptian government with that same kind of vehemence. And uh, let's not be hypocrites in this world. Let's stand up and say, 
A coup is a coup, and Egypt had a coup. A coup is a coup, and Egypt had a coup. A coup is a coup, and Egypt had a coup. A coup is a coup, and Egypt had a coup. So in this day and age, there is no place for coups. Let's come back on Saturday, more of us, stronger and louder, and thank you all for being there. We're here at the Egyptian Embassy here in Washington, D.C. Protesting the capital punishment that was ordered for 529 activists. So we're going to sign off for everybody who's embedded, uh, who's uh, retransmitting this broadcast. We're going to be signing off here in a couple of minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Activist World News Network and Occupy News Network, for retransmitting this broadcast. I'd like to say thank you to all the people that are watching. Uh, do check in. I'll be uh, live streaming more and more this week. So follow me at Freeman Sullivan on Twitter, or if you want to hook up with me on Facebook, that's Clark Sullivan. So check it out. You can also go to ActivistStream.com for more information about live streaming, and uh, do uh, contact me. I'll be happy to uh, talk to you if you want to be a live streamer. Anyway, everybody have a great day, uh, and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.